Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to take a look at Scythe. Scythe is a 1-5 to five player game that takes about 120 minutes to play. It's designed by Jamie Stegmeier and published by Stonemeyer Games. So let's go ahead down the table here. I'm going to give you a general overview of how to play the game, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so this is what an initial setup of Scythe might look like. I only have one player out and a couple things to mention. One is the base game plays one to five players. This is showing it with the expansion, which is going to include this faction here and the faction over there, which will be two empty spots in the normal base game. This, these two factions come with the Invaders from the Far expansion, and that will let you play up to one to seven players. So the other thing too is they, the game itself doesn't come painted. I painted the miniatures in there and that's it. Okay, so you're going to start out the game by randomly assigning a player one of these cool factions like what's set up right here. And there's a couple really cool factions. They're all cool factions and they all have pretty darn upside down pretty darn cool asymmetric powers and we're gonna go over a couple things for setup once you give them a player uh, a faction you're gonna give them one of these random player boards and they'll go underneath and these player boards are dual layered so what you're gonna do is in this top row here there's going to be components for the uh, each player and those are going to be filled in where you see the Annotations and the stuff will be blocked off. Sort of what you see. Oops. With this, that's what the uh, initial setup will look like. Once you have that up, you're going to place you're the four mechs for that faction on top of their player board, as shown here, covering over the abilities. And just put this player pawn here off to the side and get the faction six stars. Now when you have these combinations, so when you cover that over and stuff, you're going to look here to see what starting power you have, which is the track here, and you'll put your little uh, marker there, and you're gonna see how many power cards you get, which are going to be these guys, we'll go over in a second. And you'll look to see what your ability is for your faction. Also, you may want to take a look at your these little spots here, and these are when you upgrade the mechs. So you place the mechs over top of these at the beginning of the game. Once you upgrade the mechs, you will be able to unlock these abilities. We'll go over what the, the recruits here. These are recruit abilities that you'll get throughout the game. We'll go over those in a second. And for on the player board itself, it's going to show you that you're going to get two objective cards, which you're gonna look, this could be different for your numbers for each faction or each player board. Two of these objective cards. You will get two popularity, which is this track over here. And you'll gain four money. All right, once you have all that and your components for a thing, you, each player will get a couple of um, Reference sheets, you can put those over here, reference cards, and you're ready to start the game. Now, I will mention real quick that you're supposed to shuffle these cards and place them on here. Shuffle these, shuffle the factory cards. It's going to be one plus the player count for factory cards over there. And then, then shuffle your power cards and place them over there. A couple things to note on the board is going to be up on the top. Uh, right hand corner there where you can't quite see the quantity of each of the values that are on the power cards which will go two through five are listed on there so I have two fours I know that there's going to be only about six more fours that could possibly be out there and more than likely people have two power cards so I'm pretty good shape for that this track up here that's the track that you're going to be using to place your Stars, once the sixth star has been placed by anyone, the game immediately ends. 
the point of the game is going to be to score the most points and points are going to be gained uh, through this track and through your money your money are all each worth one point each so money throughout the game is really important too at the end of the game you're going to take a look at where you are on this track so if you are here or below this is the scoring that you're going to get for each type if you're in this section this is the scoring and if you're in this section this is the scoring and then you're going to look here and this one for every star you got to put down this is these are going to be the different values you're going to get depending on your track for every territory you, you control these are going to be the points you get at the end of the game for every two goods these are the points you get at the end of the game in addition to that you're going to have this card out here now at the beginning of the game i didn't match you're going to shuffle the ones that are available up and you're going to place it on here. Now this is going to be a different way of scoring points at the end of the game other than that track there. And this one's simply going to be every time you have every time you have a, a structure on a tunnel, you're going to gain points. If you have it on one tunnel, two points. If you have it on two tunnels, four points. And if you have it three to four, six points. And that's just an extra little scoring at the end. When you gain stars, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit, like I said, you're going to put it on the track. There is only, you can only gain one star for each thing with the exception of combat. Combat, you can gain up to two stars. If you do any more combat or any more combat beyond the two, you won't gain any more stars. Keeping in mind that some faction abilities will override the rules in the game, but I'm just going to go over the basic for how to play. So I went over how you're going to end the game and how you're going to win the game. We're going to go over how you play the game. So you notice that you got two objective cards at the beginning of the game. You're going to secretly look at these. And this is going to be what you need to do to complete the card. And if you ever complete these on your turn, you can flip them over and you'll be able to place your star on the matching icon on that track. Other ways to gain stars at the during the game is if you get to the top of the popularity track, if you get to the top of the power track. Now, a couple things to remember throughout the game is some things ask you to pay power or pay popularity. If you're ever out of it, you can't pay it. So some cards effects and stuff, you, if you can't pay for the popularity or power, you can't do them. Now. You'll notice that even at zero popularity, you're still going to score those values at the bottom of the track. So it depends on your strategy and how you're going to go throughout the game for what you want to do. Now, notice you have this little pawn here. What you're going to do is on your player board itself. So we'll move this out of the way for a second. These are just your abilities throughout the game. So throughout the game, you're going to only really refer back to this for the new abilities you get for placing out these these mechs and for when you do the recruit ability which I'll show you in a second so let's bring this up a little bit here you're gonna notice that these boards are divided into oh man everything's falling off divided into four sections now again I, I'm just giving you a general overview of the game this isn't gonna be all the rules but this is gonna give you an idea how to play the game you're gonna be able to place your pawn on one of these sections and then you're gonna do the top row and then if possible, you can do the bottom row. Now, every faction has a similar top rows and similar bottom rows. They all have different, maybe how much the bottom rows cost and they all have slightly different locations on this map for each of these. And some of them are better than others. So they're balanced through, for themselves throughout the board. So the first action on this board, which may not be the first action on other boards, if you select this one, you'll be able to uh, gain two goods and you or gain a popularity and you'll have to pay a coin. On the bottom section here, you'll be able to, if you pay three oil, be able to upgrade what's this one do 
yeah, you'll be able to upgrade the um, board itself. So you'll be able to take any one of these cubes here and bring it down to the bottom row. And what you do with that is when you bring them down to the bottom row, you're making these bottom actions cost less. This one here, you're going to be able to pay one money and you'll be able to raise your power, which is a track over here, up to or gain a power card. If you pay uh, three steel down here, you'll be able to build a mech and you'll get two coins for building a mech. When you build and deploy a mech, you have to place the mech by one of your workers. So I could deploy a mech right here if I was able to do that. And that again will uncover that spot and that will unlock a buildy. Now, one thing I just wanted to mention is the reason this pawns here is because the next turn you have to take a different action. But the next one here, you get to move to or gain a coin. And then this bottom action, you get to build a building. Now, when you build a building, you're going to take it off one of these off of here. There's four different buildings and you're going to place it on the board where one of your workers are. Now, what that does is this building if no other uh, factions on there, you actually control that. So that'll count as one of the territories that you get points for at the end of the game. And there's other things that you can get bonuses on with placing these out throughout the game. Some of them do cool stuff. This one here, notice when you place it out, you'll be able to gain a popularity. This one's one of my favorite here too, because this one, when you place it out, it actually will count as one of the workers when you do the produce action, which we'll get to in a second. And this one here actually counts as a mine. When the mines on the board are these spaces here, and these all these little mines are adjacent to each other, so I can move from here to here. So let's go over movement, because that's what we just selected as an action. When you do movement, you're gonna have up to two movement, so you can move one, one, or you can move one, two spaces. Now, I can actually move this way because you'll notice that there's a little river right here. I can't actually cross that. Now, the way that you're gonna be able to cross it, and I'm gonna show a different faction for, uh, which is gonna be with the base game for simplification. If I actually get this ability right here, this one will let me move across the river to villages and mountains. So those are the different types of regions. And you can see they have either the, the meeple picture on there or the steel. So as this faction right here, which is these guys, I can move across this river at this location and I can move back here. So this is my point of getting out. And notice that when I'm on the tunnel, I can jump around to any of the other tunnels. So you have to have some sort of ability to be able to move your mech across these rivers. If your leader, this guy right here, ends on one of these locations with one of these little tokens here, you get to get an encounter card. So you'll take this off, place it over here, and you're going to be able to draw one of these encounter cards here. And the encounter cards are really, really cool. They have awesome art and they have the titles of each of your um, options that you can select are really thematic in the game. And I like them a lot. You're going to read through and you're going to see what you have, what you get for each of these options. You're going to select one and do it. And a lot of these are really great. Like you can pay two money to gain any three resources. You can pay two populator to gain one worker and three wood. So you can get a little jump start in the game, a pretty big jump start for a lot of things in the game by picking up these encounter cards. Now, one thing I will mention is whenever you do gain resources, they will be placed on the board. And these trays that you see over here, this actually comes with the folded space insert, not with the base game. So if I gain resources, I will place them on the board. And when I spend them, I spend them off the board. Now, when you move, so if I move a worker or whatnot, I can take any amount of resources with me. Uh, another cool thing with movement actions is I can, with two movement, I can move one, pick up this guy, two. 
so I can do cool things like that. There's a little bit more to movement, but that's the general gist on, on movement itself. So we'll put these back for right now. The next thing you can do is the produce action. Oh, yeah, the next thing you can do is the produce action. And let's see if I can do this without dropping it. And the produce action is pretty cool. Uh, you can produce onto two locations. Now notice that there's a little uh, cube here where you can upgrade it, plus you can put that on the mill, which will, on the board, which will upgrade it too. And when you produce on two different locations, you're going to look at, it's not even the right stuff. Um, you're gonna look at the locations they're at. So if I'm here with one worker and I produce on that location, I will get a steel and place it on the board and I would get a grain here. If I had two workers out here, I would have gotten two steel for here and I could have still produced over here. If I have a worker over in this location, this is a special location with a little picture of the person. If you're on these locations, you get to get another worker. So I'll just take another worker off of here. That's how you're gonna get more workers in the game. But here's the little trick to the workers when you get more workers. When you get more workers in the game, it actually ends up costing more to do the produce action. As you uncover these, so as I uncover and place them out, you actually uncover from the left to right. If I had two workers out, I'd have to pay for uh, one military power to be able to produce. If I'm all the way over here, I'll have to pay a popularity too. And if all the way I have all my workers out, I'd have to pay a power, popularity, and a coin. So it can get pretty expensive, but you're gaining a lot of stuff by doing the produce action. The other thing on this board, which these bottom things don't all, or moved around on here, uh, per faction, and they cost differently for four grain on this board I can do the recruit action when I do the recruit action which is really cool I will gain on this board two coins and I get to place that one I'm gonna lift up another board to show you on one of these four things and I'll get immediately that like here I'll, if I put it here I'll get two power if I put it here I get two coins if I put it here I get two popularity if I put it here I get two power cards and there's four of these recruit things on the bottom so you can do all four by the end of the game. Now, stars. So I mentioned you get a star by filling the popularity track. You can get a uh, star from filling, uh, filling that. If you upgrade all these cubes and put them down in the bottom row, you get a star. If you place out all your monuments, you get a star. If you are able to place out or uh, recruit, um, do all your four recruit actions, you'll gain a star. If you place out all four mechs, you'll gain a star. So those are good ways to gain a star throughout the game. Now, you'll notice that once I remove that here, I have a little icon on here. And whenever anyone takes this recruit action for this one, you will gain a power card. For this one here, whenever anyone builds a monument, you'll gain a popularity. So getting these recruit actions will let you actually get bonuses on other people's turns, which is really cool. Now that is, in a nutshell, the player board itself and all the things you get to do. Now, I didn't mention combat. So when you go into combat, so I'd say this player's here and this player's here, and they brought a lot of mech. So when you go into a combat, a couple different things happen. Now again, like I said, uh, certain faction abilities can override this, but you're going to, so this is the aggressor, this is the defender, and defenders win ties in this game. You're going to get one of these power dials. So each player is gonna get a power dial. You're going to look at the track to see how much power you have and see how much you want to commit to the, to the battle. Then you will also place a power card, if you like, equal to the number of main characters you have. Now, workers don't count. And you'll place that on here. Then, simultaneously, players will flip over their cards 
and they'll add up these cards plus the the number they committed for the battle and the player with the highest power will win that battle and if that happens so when a player wins a battle a couple different things will happen one is the power that both players committed will have to be dropped down on this board so say this one did three and this one was at zero but it was five and dropped it all the way down if this player wins this this character will go back to their home base which will be way over here and they'll get a star on the track it doesn't matter if it's the active player turn or not whoever won will get a star on the track and like i said you can only have two up to two stars on the track once you get past that it doesn't matter now let's say this player won both of these would go back to their home base but the two workers here would get would have to run away and they would go back to their home base but for every worker that an opponent makes run away they lose a popularity on the popularity track and again that popularity track is going to determine which rank you're at for scoring at the end of the game one of the two or one of which tier you're at one of the three tiers so making workers run away is not great another thing would be if you if you move your let's say i move this character into here these workers won't you won't be having a fight you have to have one of the main characters or a mech be there to fight these workers would simply run away that person would lose a popularity for each worker that ran away but this character is now in charge of these resources they're theirs whenever you control an area whatever resources are there are yours if you don't control an area i walk away and I leave these resources here for some unknown reason they're not mine anymore i can't actually spend them so that's combat in a nutshell a couple other things worth mentioning is when you get to the factory right here the first time you get there you get to look at these cars and you're going to get to pick one and when you pick one these are going to be an additional action beside your player board that you can take when you play like this one for example when i put my pawn on here i get to pay a power card i'll gain three money and i get to move uh, one uh, piece to spaces and these are basically all the bottoms are the same it's the top action that's really cool like here i can pay a power to gain two popularity here i can pay two coins to do the recruit action and gain a power so these are very cool and you want to get in there because not only do you get one of these you also if you control this territory here at the end of the game that counts as the factory counts as three territories so that will help a lot with scoring so i know i know went over a lot but that is the basics on how to play scythe so let's go ahead back up to the table here and i'll give you my final thoughts on this game So when I first saw Scythe, I thought it was going to be a mech combat game where you're going to do this area control thing and eliminate your opponents and basically just your, your typical war game with mechs. But I was wrong. That's not what this game is about. You could see through the overview that it's not. But I'm very happy that it isn't. I really love everything about Scythe. I love the encounter cards. I love how beautiful the art is on all the cards and how it makes you immersed into the gameplay because the art is like a thematic thing it's like it's and the and the text matches for your choices and you really feel like you're making those choices which is really really cool and i don't even mind the fact that the game ends on the sixth star immediately because a lot of times inside just because you got your sixth star does not mean you won you have to be able to balance everything. You have to be able to efficiently work your uh, player board and get the upgrades properly. And when you do the top action, to be able to do the bottom action too. You have to balance getting your mechs. You have to balance doing um, the area control portion of the board where you try to control as much area as you can for points. You have to balance when you're gonna go into combat. You have to allocate your resources properly, worry, somewhat about someone taking your resources although i will say that the, the detriment uh, for taking someone's resources and losing popularity uh, when you have workers in places is pretty um, 
dramatic for this game because those are also the scales that you get points on. There is just a lot to this game. And if you're looking for a very deep strategic game and looking at the overview and that sounds like something you might be interested in, this game, I would highly recommend it. It is a very great game. Down to the component quality, to the thought through the mechanics of the game, everything is just great. This is one of my favorite games. It's going to be in my collection forever. I've upgraded a lot of the components on there, like you said. This is actually the first game I've actually painted all the miniatures for. I've never done that before. I'm, going, I'm working on other ones, but this is definitely the first. I love Scythe. It's just great. So that's my thoughts on this game. Thank you 